This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. Hello there, this is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur known as Wise Courtship all over social media. What? You're not subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? Oh my goodness, you've got to listen to this podcast so that you can get your free lifetime subscription as we help you get committed relationships, whole relationships that you're going to be satisfied with. No playing and no games. Find out what they're really about by tuning in. Well, hello there. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur. I own Word Therapy Publishing and Alphabet Theater Workshop. But many of you know me as Wise Courtship because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to read God's word, to pray for one another and empower and encourage one another in the times that we live in. And so make sure you go ahead and share this broadcast with one another. And um, if you're watching me via Periscope, because we're broadcasting Periscope and Facebook Live at the same time, uh, make sure that you share by pushing right down there. Yeah, mm -hmm. share with all your followers, tweet it out and put it on Facebook. And if you're watching me via Facebook Live, go ahead and share down there. Invite individual people into the broadcast, host a watch party, or just share on your timeline, okay? Thank you if you're watching me via Twitter, and of course, YouTube, and those who are watching me via the web. Good to see each and every one of you, and I'm so excited to be joining with you on today. Today, we're going to talk about stifled praise, <laughs> stifled praise. Praise. So get ready because moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer starts right now. All right, dear ones, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Oops, sorry about that. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, let me get my glasses on and then we'll see who's in here. Okay. We will see who is in the place. Good to see you. I see so many people watching me on different platforms. Make sure you say hello to me. All right. All right. Yeah. Say hello to me because you're watching, but I love when I get the comments and I know some of you are watching and cannot comment. So, um, for those who can make sure you do. Okay. Make sure you do. All right. I'm going to put the scripture in just one second. I'm going to go ahead and give the scripture to you so that you can pull it up. That's what I'm going to be reading on today, y'all. I'm going to be reading Psalms 34. And um, I think I'm going to read it from the New International Version. And I'm just really sorry that these lights are like 
I don't even know why the lights are like this today. I mean, it's like a billion lights on right now, but I'm not in my studio. Um, since COVID-19, I've been having um, repairmen in, and so we've been shifting rooms and different things like that. So we've been doing some extra special stuff in the house. And um, so it's got me bouncing around there. So, okay, Psalm 34, you ready? Yeah, because these lights is getting hot. <laughs> I'm reading from the New International Version, okay? It says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. I will uh, I glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all of their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may, may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. And that is Psalm 34. And I just wanted to read that as an opportunity to give praise to God and to give honor to God and to give glory to God, not necessarily to actually uplift the scripture and talk about that particular scripture, but I did want to give honor and praise to him. Now, it is amazing that today I was going to talk about stifled praise and just about every forum I've heard the men and women of God talking about giving God praise. And I could have uh, easily have gotten a scripture about singing the Lord's songs in a strange land. I could have easily have gone to that scripture. Um, but instead, I wanted to take the time to read a psalm of praise. And I wanted to say to all of us that although, good to see you, daughter, make sure you greet me. Good to see you. Oh, gosh. Hey, Andrea, good to see you. Good to see you on today. Before I get into this further, that's my spiritual daughter right there. Hey, darling. She's such a beautiful queen. That's right. Exactly. And so um, before I... Um, before I um, really get into it, I want to say that I know that we're going through some turbulent times. And really the whole point of the message on today is to really encourage you to continue praising God. Because some people can only praise God when things are going their way. Y'all didn't hear me. That's why I need for you to share this. Maybe I'm not talking to you. Go ahead and share this broadcast. Some people can only praise God when things are going their way. If they're the right weight, if they're living in the right house, they have the right job and the right amount of money and all types of things. Some of us can only praise God when we're in church. 
Some of us are struggling. Some of you who are watching me right now, you are struggling, okay? Because you are not in a church house. But the church is not a building. The church are the people. The church is a living organism moving and, and, and developing and growing and out there in the community serving and empowering God's people and helping those who are in need and bringing the gospel to those who are lost. And so many, many who are watching on today, dear ones, are struggling because they're not in the church house today and they can't seem to praise because of that. I'm so glad to see you too, darling. <laughs> I know that, right? I know. We all need it. And that's what's so good about God's word because God's word, you can open it up and get something that you need right out of there at the time you need it. And so some of us cannot praise God. We cannot sing his songs. We cannot pray. We cannot read his word when we are not in the church building. Our praise is stifled. We're talking about stifled pray, praise today. Let me get back to that so you can see that. We're talking about stifled praise. And some of us, our praise is stifled because we're not in the church building. COVID-19 removed us from being in the church building and we having a difficult time. Some of us, it was so difficult that we got to stand in the church even though it's empty. Okay. I'm not going to go into that deep right now. Y'all catch me on another broadcast because even the psychology of that, that we can't even get our foot, nobody in there, but we got to be in there. The word is supposed to be for out there, but we still in the building. Okay. Don't get mad at me. I'm just giving it to you the way the Lord has given it to me. Some of us, our praise is so stifled because we don't have tradition. We're not doing things in the way that we are used to. Not realizing that God has never promised us tradition. <laughs> he promised that we would get that word, that if we would accept that word, that's what would change our lives, not the tradition. Oh, my goodness. Some of us, our praise is stifled because of what we're going through right now, because of turbulent times, because things are not really going our way, because what we see out here is, is scary, because what we see, we thought we were on one level, and I don't know why people thought that, I really don't, because racism and sexism and ageism and all the other isms have always been around, because as long as they're evil on the earth, we will see sin. We will see evil. We will see negativity. We will see separation. We shouldn't see it on this level. I know that's hard to deal with. I know that's hard to take. But don't be surprised when sinners sin. The surprise is when Christians live a life of sin. When they're supposed to love and they don't love. When they're supposed to help you out and they turn their backs on you. But so many of us get stifled praise because we're living in turbulent times and it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. Good to see you, Lakeisha. Good to see you on today. And it seems like it's not going to get any better. But if you read the book, we're talking about the word of God. If you read the word of God, you know it's going to get worse before it gets better. Somebody put that in the chat box. It's going to get worse before it gets better. We're talking about stifled praise on today, um, Lakeisha. That's what we're talking about on today. And so, so many of us have reasons why our praise is stifled, is stopped up. Some of us got sick in COVID-19 and our bodies are racked with pain and we're fighting for our lives. And, and once that happens, we've lost our praise. Some of us lost, I know I've lost dear friends, dear friends to COVID-19. Some of us lost family members, mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and coworkers and aunts and aunties and children. We lost people who were important to us. Some of us lost our pastor and our leaders. And because of that, we, our praise is stifled. We can't seem to get a praise out. Oh my God, y'all help me on today. And so I could have easily gone to the scripture about um, how can I sing the Lord's songs in a strange land? But I read to you Psalm 34 and Psalm 34. That's what I just got finished reading to you for those who came on. Talked about how God is good and what God will do. And, and if you listen to him, what he, how, how he would deliver you out of your troubles, how he would heal your body, how he looks out for those who are righteous and how he's going to Deal with those who are unrighteous, for those who are evil and who are wicked. Somebody say that's good news. 
And that's the kind of news that we've got to hold on to, guys. Listen, we want God to work in our timing, but somebody says God doesn't work in our timing. We, we've heard he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. That is so true. It is so true. He may not come the way you want him to at the time he wants you to. But listen, if you just wait on God, it's going to be right on time. And we sometimes we look at what's going on. It, oh, yes, God gives us opportunities to create. Lakeisha Mosley said, yes, indeed. What a blessing that is, isn't it? And for many of us, for many of us, that if we don't see God's hand move when we want it to move, that stifles our praise. We're talking about stifle praise, y'all. And just like, good to see you, Pastor Chick. Good to see you, Pastor Audrey. <laughs> Look, I'm using her nickname and put the title together. <laughs> good to see you, Pastor Audrey. God bless you. That's my sis right there. And so there's so many things, Pastor Audrey, there's so many things that stifles people's praise. And if we're honest, if we're honest, there's times that happen in our lives where we almost, mm, see, that's a different word right there. That's a different ad adjective. We almost had our praise stifled. Some people try to stifle our praise, even sometimes in the church itself. I know there's somebody right now who's thinking about, I stifled her praise and I laughed at his praise and, and I said it didn't take all that and we don't need to have to, we don't need to do all of that. But how many know that there's some people sitting home right now Maybe you're even watching this broadcast and you said, if I could get back into the church house, I won't stifle their praise. I'll help them praise. Wow. Some people just don't get it. Put that in the chat box. Some people just don't get it. They just don't get it. just like it was outlined right here. Just how it was outlined right here as we read in Psalm 34, God's goodness. And not just in Psalm 34, but all throughout the Bible, <clears throat> you learn about God's character. God's character is amazing because, listen, so many people in, in the United States, in the world, look to their leaders as if they are God. They expect their leaders to be perfect. They expect their leaders to say the right thing. Now, this is not excusing them when they say the wrong things. Because there's some things we just ought to do, just ought to be common decency, common courtesy. But we get so upset when a man or woman of God falls from grace or when our leaders do things that we think they should not do. But you know what? I don't trust man. I trust God. Oh, I have an element of trust. You know what I'm saying? You know, you you figure if they come here, they're going to do, if they say they're going to do some work or whatever, you know, that general trust. But putting all your trust and your hopes and your dreams and your fears in an individual, that's not going to work. Oh, my gosh. You got to trust God because God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's why we praise him. We don't praise him just because we got a car in the yard and we've got a beautiful home. We got clothes on our backs. We got shoes. That's good. You ought to praise him for that. But that is not just why you praise him because he gives you good gifts. Oh my gosh. We praise him because of who he is. Because God is still on the throne. He's not a mad man. See, some of us know what it's like not to have good leaders. I bet you some of y'all will vote right this time. Huh? <laughs> you don't take that for granted. See, and, and that's what kills me sometimes, too. When you watch these news stories and, and there's a crime that breaks out into a, a neighborhood that's not used to having crime. And they'll say, well, it never happens here because this is a quiet neighborhood. We take so much for granted because we put so much trust in man. If we could only put that kind of trust in God, then our praise wouldn't be stifled. If we could just completely and blankly trust God the way we trust man. I'm used to keeping my doors open because then, you know, this is a safe neighborhood. If we could just trust God that way. We trust man and man is fickle and sometimes and sometimes the man, the man or woman is such, is such a sweet person. But even in being a sweet person, they can't always pull through. Mama can't always pull through. Because mama is limited and mama will, will die one day and she can't do. But God can always do. 
And so no matter what happens in your life, no matter what the circumstances is, whether you lose your money, whether you got an extra amount of money, whether you got just enough money, whether you, um, whether you have all your family around you or whether all of them are dying off one by one, whatever the circumstance is, God is worthy of praise. I wish somebody in this chat box said God is worthy of praise. Oh my gosh. He's not worthy of praise because you got everything you want. He's worthy of praise because he is God. You know, when you have <coughs> when you have a terrible leader, and many countries have had terrible leaders, and they could tell you what it's like. And as long as you got a good one, you can take it for granted. Good to see you. Uh, is that walking, walking in abundance? Yes, from Periscope. Good to see you. Blessings to you, darling. He's looking beautiful too. That look at that. She's so beautiful. But anyone who has a terrible leader can tell you, you ought to thank God because we know what it's like to have a terrible leader and what path it can take you down. When you have when you have a healthy body, sometimes you don't realize how blessed you are until you meet someone whose health is has broken down or your health begins to fail. Oh my gosh, some of y'all got some friends and you even got lifetime friends. Friends you've been knowing for your entire life and they've been there with you and they pray with you and they love on you and you don't know how good it is and how wonderful it is to have a friend. But if you ask somebody who's lonely, somebody who wants somebody desperately to be their friend, what about someone who wants to be loved for who and what they are. They want a partner to have with them. They want someone to love and to hold and to cherish and to honor. And you have someone and you're taking them for granted. We're still talking about stifled praise, guys. But when you began to list your blessing, they say count every blessing and name them one by one. When you begin to name those blessings and you begin to count those blessings, you see God has been good to you and he's worthy of praise. And when you begin to realize that you have a God that's not fickle and phony and fake, and he only liked the old people, or he only liked the young people, or he only liked the righteous people, or he only likes this people of this group. He only liked the black people. He only liked the white people. He decides whether you worthy or not. And all of this kind of stuff, this funny and fickle and, and, and sometimes stuff that we do. When we realize that God is good to us and he doesn't have to be, that he has unfailing love, that his mind is stable, that he cannot be triggered off because you said something he didn't like. Oh my gosh. Whew. Somebody needs to stop right now and give God praise. Somebody need to throw their hands up and say, God, I thank you. I thank you that you're not like man, that you shouldn't lie, nor the son of man that you got to repent that you are a good God. And that's why when I pray and I give praise, I give God honor for who he is more than what he's given me. Oh, that's important. And you ought to give God praise for that because he didn't have to do that for you. But some of us need to get past that. God, I thank you for my car, my home and my wife or my husband. We need to get past that. We need to go deeper. We need to thank God for that very breath that we have. And somebody is saying now, but Tony, is so much going on. They're trying to kill us. It's open season on African-Americans and, and you don't know. Or we've been held down and, and we may have some Spanish speaking people watching me and said, you don't know the prejudice and, and how we had to hide ourselves and, and, and how we, uh, my, my husband got thrown out of the country for no reason and all of that. But listen, if you read Psalm 34 with me, it says this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered delivered him out of all his troubles. It's not talking about poor in money. It's talking about poor in spirit. It's talking about poor in circumstance. It's talking about poor. It's talking about being that underdog. It's talking about being the down, uh, downtrodden and the person who is left out, who was overlooked, who is seen as unworthy. 
I'm down with Black Lives Matter. I have to be. I'm Black and I definitely know I matter and everyone else matters too. But listen, even though we are lifting our voices to say we matter, at the end of the day, what really matters is that God knows we matter. We need to fight for justice. We need to always do that. Our people have done it. This is not something new. So don't think, oh, we young and we doing this and you old people ain't do nothing. Yes, they did. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to hold a Black Matters uh, sign up. You wouldn't be able to go down the street. We wouldn't have no Black mayors, no Black governors. We wouldn't have no Black nothing if it wasn't for our ancestors. We thank God for every last one of them, including the first African that stepped his foot onto this soil. We thank God for each and every one of them. Somebody need to thank God for your ancestors. We thank them for their fighting spirit, their moral compass, their connectivity to God. We thank God for them. We can't do it without God. We wouldn't have the health and strength. We would not dodge this COVID-19 and have the protection of God over us if we didn't have God because every last one of us could be gone. Every last one of us could be snuffed out. Even with this whole situation of uh, of the officer putting his knee on, uh, on uh, George Floyd's neck, he wouldn't have been able to do it without the strength of God. He used it for the wrong thing. He used it for the wrong thing. But God has given us all strength and health and he's given us free will and he's given us a mind. And if we would turn toward him, he would bless us. That's what he said in 30, Psalm 34. But if you insist on doing wicked, he's going to deal with you. And some of us, we can see it so clear in black and white. Oh my gosh, we can see it. Oh, this is so wrong and it's so unjust. And you are right, you are right, you are right. But are you unjust with your own people? Are you unjust against women? Are you unjust against children? Are you laying your hands on them and molesting them and taking advantage of them? I'm still talking about stifled prayer, praise. Are you, are you mistreating women? Are you women womanizing? Are you playing games? Are you trying to rip people off with their money, cheating on your taxes? Are you undermining other people's business so you can get ahead of them? What are you doing? We have to clean our hearts out and clean our spirits out so we won't have a stifled praise. There's so much that can stifle our praise. And listen, there's one major thing that can stifle your praise, and that's having sin in your heart. Yeah, you're going to sin. Sometimes you're going to mess up. You're going to miss the mark. But when you're living in that sin, it's hard for you to praise. I don't look around at people when I'm praising because I'm busy praising, but I can tell you that when you got a real problem lifting your hands and you got a problem opening your mouth and you got a problem praising whichever way you praise, you don't have to run, you don't have to jump. That may be your thing, that may not be, but you ought to be able to praise some kind of way. And when your praise is stifled, you may want to check your life. Somewhere, sin has stepped in. Well, I, Miss Tony, I ain't killed nobody and I didn't, but maybe it's just unbelief. Maybe you just allowed hope to cipher out of your life. Maybe you said this whole Black Lives Matter and I'm tired. We've been fighting this for years and ain't nobody listening and I'm not going to go to the church no more because God didn't do this when he was supposed to do this. There you go. When you allow sin, that's a sinful thought. When you allow that to come into your heart and your mind, it's going to stop that praise. It's going to stifle that praise. But I, I declare as the scripture starts off, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, whether I have money or not. Listen, and I can tell you that because I've had it and I've not had it. I've had it in abundance 
and I've had it where I can't hardly find it. I don't know where it is. I got to con conjure it up some kind of way. I can um, praise him in sickness and in health. I know what it's like to be on my sick bed. I know what it's like to be near my deathbed, okay? I know what it's like for the doctors to struggle to keep me to survive. And I still give God praise because all the praise and glory is due to him. I know what it's like to have freedom and your freedom be snuffed and look like you're about to leave, about to leave your grass. I know what it's like to be in the courtroom. I know what it's like to be in the sick room. I know what it's like. And in every situation, I gave God praise. Not because I'm so wonderful, not so because I'm so great, but because I've got God in my heart. And if you're watching me and saying, listen, I wish I could have that, because let me tell you, I do have joy. Oh, I get sad sometimes. I get disappointed sometimes. And there's some people who try me and try to take advantage of me or take things from me, especially in the area of business. There's always somebody trying to come and take advantage and snatch something away from you. But the only reason why, and you know, it's funny because when I'm when I'm truthful, people think that you're mad. <laughs> I said, I'm not mad, honey. I'm just telling you the truth. Then you're being convicted. That's, that's what's going on. If I tell you that you just lied about something, you think I'm mad. No, I'm not mad. I'm just telling you, you you're a liar. <laughs> it's just true. You told a lie. You're a liar. Get right. I just, that's all I will tell you. Get right. That's not mad. That's a conviction. But even in all of that, I still have joy. You may say how you do that. That's not because I'm wonderful. That's not because I'm perfect because I do make mistakes and I, I get angry, but I try not to sin behind it because it's okay to be angry. Bible says be angry, but sin not. But I'm only able to do it by the grace of God. It's because of God in me. And you know, some Christians are watching me right now and you don't even believe that either. You in church, you raise your hands and all this kind of stuff, but you don't believe because you still got bitterness in your heart. You are still holding grudges on people. You are still um, um, uh, dealing with some unforgiving situations and you have not cleaned yourself out through praise and worship and going before the Lord because of your unbelief. I can't explain how it happens. I can't. All I can tell you is when you have God in your life, you can't hold on to that. You can't do it. You try. There's times I tried, but I can't do it because the spirit of God, he's in me and he can't have that bitterness and that hatred and that malice in there where he is. You might be wondering how in the world am I going to get God in my heart? Well, first of all, darling, all you have to believe is God. Jesus is God's son. And that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's all you have to do. You have to believe it. And then say it with your mouth. Say, I believe you, Jesus. Jesus, I have sinned. That means I've done some things that were wrong. I know I'm wrong. And I need you in my life. Jesus, come into my life. And if you say that prayer, then you have God in your life. You are what we call a Christian. And you need to get someplace where they teach in the Bible, honey. And that they are praising God. And you need to honor him. You need to bless him in all circumstances. You don't bless God just because stuff going good, just because you think you won the lottery. And it's like, thank you, Jesus. No, you need to thank him in all things. You don't thank him because somebody beat you over the head, but you thank him because you made it through. You don't thank him because somebody just robbed you of your money, but you thank him because you walked away with your life. You don't thank them because somebody just broke, broke your heart. You thank them because you still have joy and room to love somebody else. Oh, my gosh. You thank them because he showed you that that person is not worthy, not worthy of your love. You give God honor and glory and praise because he has your back. It may not go the way you want. And let me tell you something. When it doesn't go the way you want, it may be just going the way you want. You may have wanted him, but God is trying to show you, no, you don't want that. Because mm -mm. when you see what it really is, you're going to be crying out to me worse than you're crying out for me right now. So you need to trust me. And that's what it's all about when we're supposed to be trusting God. Trust him, not you. You're not that smart. you cute, but you're not that cute. you educated, but you're not that educated. God is the one who has all the sense, all the knowledge. Trust him and he will 
direct your path. Today we talked about stifled praise. And if you can, if you can catch this, and if you can get God in your heart, and if you can just trust him with everything, with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, if you can trust him, even when you're like, oh God, but I wanted that, and now it didn't work out. If you could just trust, and you may lose this, but he's got something greater right here. You may be trying to hold on to that $40,000 a year job. I got to say it like that to y'all, because sometimes we don't understand until we see it in money. You holding on to 40000 and he's trying to get you out of that to give you 100000 Trust God. Just trust them. Somebody put that in the chat box. Trust God. Trust God. Even if you're watching me on the re replay, trust God. If you can get that, you'll be able to praise like nobody else. You know, when I would be praising God in church and, oh, my gosh, sometimes I would be cutting the steps so bad. Sometimes the saints would say, oh, they going through something. They think you're going through something bad, something, something, something is something is not going your way, you know, and that's why you praising like that. But what they don't realize is I'm praising in advance because I have that much trust in God. I have that much faith in him that I know he's got something better. And it's gotten to the point now I can feel something break in the spirit. And I felt that a couple of days ago in regards to this Black Lives Matter situation, right around the time we all were appalled. And I believe if I didn't put it on Facebook platform, I believe I tweeted it out. It was on one of those platforms. And um, I did say, I believe I said on Facebook, better days are coming. But on one of the platforms, I said, I felt something break in the spirit. And when I felt it break, I felt like something better is coming something awesome. And now we're starting to see things reveal. See how this ugliness, out of this ugliness, out of this hurtful situation, out of this, out of this, uh, this terrible situation, see how God is moving. Does anybody else see God moving? Somebody put in the chat box, God is moving. If you see God is moving, put that in the chat box. God is moving. And he's turning things around, things that people said they would never do. He like, oh yeah, you're going to do it. Oh, y'all got to go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. That's why he's worthy of praise. That's why I don't listen to man. Man will tell you what he not going to do. But when God gets finished with him, oh, my God, you may be in the courtroom right now and every last person is against you. But I touch and agree right now that before it's over, the prosecutor who's trying to prosecute you is now going to represent you. They're going to sing your praises in the courtroom because that's how God will do it. Somebody go like this. God will turn it around. God will turn it around. He'll turn it around. A person will be trying to bury you. And before you know it, they'll be bringing you flowers. They'll be uplifting you. When God gets in it, when he gets in control of it, he's going to do what he says you're going to do. Whatever God said over your life is going to be yes and amen. That's why I don't be worrying. Why are you going to fear man who can only kill the body? Fear God who will kill the body and the soul. God is all powerful. He has all power in his hands. God can do anything but fail. Listen, we're going to have to go ahead and pray. I really want to continue with this. I could talk about this one all night because God is in the blessing business. He never did get off his throne. Somebody put God is on his throne if you believe that. Good to see you, Lula Ganey. Good to see you. Oh, my gosh. That's a woman of God right there. Woo. She, I don't know if she knows how powerful she is. That is a powerful woman of God right there. A teaching woman of God. Powerful. With a quiet spirit. And those are even more deadly in the spirit. <laughs> they even more deadly in the spirit, honey. That's somebody who could crush Satan's head. And he won't even know what happened. She's just so quiet and friendly and all kind of stuff, honey. I'm telling you. God is in control. He can do anything but fail. Don't y'all let these people make you think that they in control. They're not in control. If you're a leader right now, God, uh, God enabled you to have that position. And you're going to have to make an account of what you do. Oh, my goodness. Don't be so quick to lead. Because you're going to make an account of how you lead God's people. Some people get in leadership and they want to put their foot on somebody's neck and put, put their knee on somebody's neck and their foot on somebody's head. 
But don't you be quick to do it because you're going to have to make a count of how you treat God's people. No matter what you think of people, whether you like their color, whether you like their nationality, whether you like their religion, whether you like where they live, whether you like their economic, socioeconomic status, they are still God's people. And you have no business putting your hands on somebody put in the chat box. Take your hands off God's people. Oh, my gosh. Whoo. Take your hands off God's people. And let me tell you something. God knows. That's why he just used my mouth and, and he don't give me nothing prepared to say ahead of time because I'll just open it up and let him say what he got to say. I don't care if you're the king of England, honey. I, if the Lord put me in, I'm going to tell you, get your hands off God's people because you will pay a price on how you treat God's people. It's not your people. Pastors, that's not your people. You are the shepherd to people, but that's not your people. Okay. Mothers, fathers, those are not your children. You ought to raise them, but those are God's people. Y'all not listening. Y'all not listening. I'm trying to find the prayer, y'all. I'm trying to find the prayer, but evidently the Lord want me to say this stuff because I couldn't find the prayer yet. What I'm trying to find is the people who ask for prayer requests. And we do have uh, a one person who put the prayer request up ahead of time. It's my sister, Minister um, Minister Simone Henderson Jeffers, her husband, Pastor Rodney Jeffers. She says, uh, just continue to pray, pray for my husband, Pastor Rodney Jeffers. His surgery was rescheduled for tomorrow, possibly. We are praying for a successful surgery and total recovery in Jesus' name. And many of you know that he is um, going to undergo heart surgery. Okay, heart surgery. So we're going to pray for him. Now, listen, when I put these glasses back on, please list your prayer request in the chat box at that time. If you're watching me on the replay, I'm going to go down through the chat box. If I see your prayer request, I'm going to pray for you at that moment, too, as well. And so with all these men and women of God on here, honey, we ought to be, look, we are, people ought to be getting healed instantly. So let's go ahead and pray. First of all, let's praise him. Let's celebrate him. Y'all can celebrate him through the chat box. You can lift your hands where you are. You can praise God in your way where you are and uh, let God know that you love him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. Come on, come on, let's celebrate him. God, we honor you. We lift you up, God. We magnify you. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. You deserve it, God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You can do anything but fail. God, you reign and you super reign. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done as it is in heaven. Let it also be done here on earth. God, we honor you. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's praise him. You spoke worlds into existence, oh God. You formed the earth and you formed man from dry ground. And God, we give you praise. You said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And God, we praise you. We have breath in our bodies and we honor you. We salute you, oh God. Hallelujah, the maker and creator of all things. You can do anything, oh God. Come on, somebody say, God, you can do anything. We trust in you. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but God, we trust in you. We honor you, not just today, but every day of our lives, oh God. We trust you now, today, and forevermore. We bow down to you saying, holy, 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 holy is the Lamb of God. God, we bless you on today. God, forgive us if our praise has been stifled in whatever way, because of the cares of the world, because we didn't get what we wanted, maybe because of a lack of faith, oh God, maybe because of the present circumstances. God, forgive us. Come on, y'all. Let's say, God, forgive me when I have not given you the praise and the honor, oh God, that you deserve. God, we just bless you and we honor you and we magnify you. Oh God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, clothes. God, we thank you for keeping us in this COVID-19 pandemic situation. God, we thank you for health and strength. God, we thank you for, for just keeping us, oh God, in our minds, in our bodies, in our hearts, in our spirits. God, we love you. God, we thank you for our family and our friends, oh God. We thank you for the memories of our loved ones, oh God, that passed on before us. God, we thank you, particularly for our ancestors, oh God, who fought, who bled, who died. 
who um who work so hard in this country to bring about justice and to bring about change and to bring about love and to bring about unity. God, we thank you for every person in their rightful place who have held up the blood stained banner, who have said this is what God stands for. We thank you for allowing them to raise up a standard through you because you said you would raise up your standard, God, and we just love you and we honor you, oh God, today. God, we thank you for this country. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, oh God, for that. God, we pray for our country as they go through turbulent times oh God, but you knew this day would come. You tried to prepare us for it. You tried to warn us for it. You tried to get us to repent for it, God, but give us a heart of repentance. God, don't let us rest. Let us, let's just let, help us not to sleep until we get our hearts right, until we get on one accord with your program, your will, until we know and learn that there is not different races, there's only one race. It's the human race is what you made, oh God. You made one man and you, you made one woman and they began to procreate, oh God. And they went on different places of the earth and they some got tans and some didn't, but they are still all from the creation that you made. You said that let us make man in our image, O oh God, and you breathe the breath of life into the nostrils of man and made him a living soul. So God, we honor you, we bless you, and we magnify you. So God, now we come before you with the prayer request. God, we touch and agree with Minister Simone Henderson Jeffers, but Pastor Rodney Jeffers, oh God, who's undergoing heart surgery. God, put your hands um, all around him, your hands of love and your healing hands. You said by Jesus stripes, we are healed, oh God. So we are praying healing. Somebody touch and agree with me. We're praying healing right now in the name of Jesus. Help those uh, doctors and, and skilled doctors, oh God, to help them to do the things that they need to do and to do it correctly and to do it accurately, oh God. I pray for supernatural healing. I believe in supernatural healing because I've seen a piece of your power and I believe you are still in the healing business. So God, I pray for that in the name of Jesus. We pray total recovery. Somebody put that in the chat box. Total recovery, total recovery, total recovery in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for Tracy Miles right now, for her family, her children, her children's children, oh God, for all of that extended family there, even when they are dealing with bereavement. Oh God, put your loving hands around Tracy, oh God. Put your love as she is uh, still dealing with the death of her son, oh God, and her sister, God, touch her right now. Death has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And God, we just agree and believe and honor. Oh God, touch her right now. Come on, somebody extend your hand toward Tracy. Touch her right, God, right now in the name of Jesus. All of the hurt, all of the sorrow, God, begin to replace it with happy memories. Begin to replace it with ideas and things that she can do, oh God, to honor her son. Begin to replace it with smiles and, and, and laughter. And never to forget, never, ever, ever to forget the contribution of her son, her sister, oh God, and all that they have meant in her life and everyone else's lives. Everyone else who was mourning with her, oh God, touch, oh God. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up if you have it. God, we pray for every business on this broadcast. We pray increase over the businesses, especially our small businesses, oh God, the businesses owned by women, minorities. God, increase right now. This is the time for us. Increase. God, we pray for every person, whether they're on this broadcast or not, that they, that they will begin to support our businesses. Compel them right now, oh God, to support our businesses in the name of Jesus. Send resources. Send resources, oh God. Send whatever we need, oh God, to be effective. God, we pray for every ministry, every pastor. God, a special prayer over Pastor Audrey. Oh God, as she um admits she preaches the word of God. Now she goes in and out among your people, oh God. Touch her right now, endow her with the Holy Spirit anew and afresh. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, a special prayer over Andrea Thompson, oh God, as you as she is just so gifted, oh God, in social and business, social change and businesses, oh God. Touch her right now, oh God. Elevate her, prepare her. God, we pray for Lakeisha Mosley as she's on the airwaves. Oh God, bringing encouragement, empowerment. 
Oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, give her the words to say, put the spotlight on her, oh God, and help her be prepared as you elevate her, God, in the name of Jesus. Pray for walking in abundance right now in the name of Jesus. We are touching and agreeing with her for a vehicle that she will be able to go back and forth and wherever she needs to go, oh God. Bless her, oh God. Give her a good vehicle that will be reliable, that will be uh, wonderful, that she can enjoy a comfortable uh, air condition, all of that, oh God, that she will be able to enjoy in the name of Jesus. We pray uh, so for Sharina as she, Sharina Marie, as she comes onto this broadcast, touch her, oh God. You know what she stands in the need of. God, we pray for every replay viewer, every web viewer, those who are watching us on Twitter and YouTube, oh God, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Every hurting person, every hurting person, whether you're hurting over what's going on today in our world, or whether you're hurting because your heart has been broken, you're hurting maybe because you're alone, you're hurting because of what your parents have done, you're hurting, you're hurting, you're hurting. God, right now, restore the hearts in the name of Jesus, we pray. And for every prayer that was unspoken, too embarrassing to put through the chat box, maybe too private to share with anyone God, you know all about it. And we touch and agree, oh God, knowing that you are going to answer them in a way that it's going to be perfect. It's going to be the right thing at the right time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good to see you, Serena Marie. Good to see you, darling. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to just give you a word of encouragement and then we're going to go ahead. Listen, I just want to say to each and every one of you, first of all, thank you for supporting the broadcast. It really, really has gone all around the world. You want to pray for marriage? Oh my gosh, girl, you came in the right place. Now, Serena Marie is watching via Periscope. So most people who are watching from Periscope are seeing me as wise courtship. Let me tell you something. You just came in the right place right here because I'm going to pray right now, special prayer over you. Okay. You want to be married? Let me know. You want to be married? Because I'm about to pray for you and I want to, I want to be specific. Let me know, Serena Marie. Let me get my glasses on so I can get it. Okay. You've been with your boyfriend since you was 14 and you're 27. And you have a child. I want you to reach out to me. Um, you can either reach out to me on Facebook as Wise Courtship, or you can email me. I'm going to put my email in here. I want you to reach out to me because I want you to make sure you get the right information. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to do a general prayer, and then um, as you get your information, then we can have maybe more of a specific prayer here. Okay, let me put this in here. Um. And I say that because Wise Courtship is a ministry that I have to help people uh, determine the true character and true intent of their love interest. And that's serious business. Somebody say serious business in the chat box. Somebody say that is serious business. Go ahead and email that, okay? Or you're going to go to my website, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, all right? So let's pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray for Serena, that you give her wisdom, that you give her guidance. God, open her eyes and reveal to her so that she can see clearly the direction that you have for her. Oh, God, if marriage is for her in this situation, oh, God, God, help it to happen um, in a timely manner. Help her to prepare herself. Help her to do all of the things that she needs to do to be prepared, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for a happy marriage. We're praying for a healthy marriage. And we're praying for a marriage that's centered with you in the center, with you guiding them each and every step of the way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Serena, get that email, and I'm going to put my website up in a minute, and you go to that website. You're going to need to get you that book, Wise Courtship. Now, I'm not trying to just sell no book. This book is really going to help you, okay? Uh, do I have any witnesses that's going to put in the chat box to let her know if you're watching via Periscope? Yeah, but if even if you're not watching via Periscope, I'm going to put their comment up there. I want those to testify who know that that uh, Wise Courtship book is going to help you, all right? Because we need guidance. We need wisdom in the area of relationships, all right? We don't need to just get with empty body. All right. And so we want to make we want to cover our sister and make sure that she is on the right path. 
And I don't think things just happen by mistake. I believe that was God ordained. So somebody, I need somebody uh, who's going to confirm and who's going to, um, who's going to be confirmation that the wise courtship book is going to bless her. Somebody let her know. You email me. Okay, darling, I'm going to definitely reach out to you. I need somebody to, to back that up. Okay, so while that's going on, I want to encourage you guys before I get off this broadcast. We talked about stifled praise, stifled praise. And in other words, sometimes people's praise get, um, where you know, it gets hard to praise. You feel like it's hard to praise God for whatever reason. Whatever reason you feel like it's hard to praise God, maybe because of the circumstances that's going on right now. Maybe it's because um, you just don't trust God anymore. You lost your hope. Or maybe it's because you're not getting everything you feel like you ought to get. But whatever the reason is, God is still worthy of praise, guys. Even if he doesn't move the way you want him to move, even as he does, even though he doesn't do the things you think he should do, even if he pulls people out of your life. God is still good. We don't know what's down the road, guys. We don't know what's down the road. We've got to trust God. We got to depend on God. God knows what he's doing. Somebody put in the chat box, God knows what he is doing. And we've got to trust him and we've got to honor him. And I want to encourage you that it may look, it may look real, real bad right now. But that doesn't mean that's how it's going to end. As a matter of fact, if you read God's word, Things are going to get worse before they get better. But in the end, we win. Somebody put that in the chat box. In the end, we win. That's right. God knows exactly what he's doing. And I see God changing. Even in the midst of this whole Black Lives Matter movement, I see a worldwide movement. That's what we can see in the natural but in the spiritual, it's already happened. There's a shaking up going on. There's a changing of the guard. There are some things that are twisting and turning around. I have to believe that those who were the tail are about to be the head. Oh, y'all need to celebrate God off of that. Oh, my gosh. Somebody need to say, I received that. That I'm the head. I'm not going to be the tail. He's switching things around. That's why I don't just trust man. I trust God. Because at the end of the day, God has the final say. No one can curse what God has blessed. <laughs> oh, my God. No one can curse what God has blessed. And I just give God all honor and I give him praise. So let me tell you something. What would you do if you knew you had the total blessing of the Lord? What would you do if you knew you were heirs? to God's kingdom. What would you do if you knew that God, the entire maker and creator of all things took time to make you wonderfully and intricately that everything he put inside of you, he put inside of you for a reason, that he's put greatness in you. What would you do if you know that you could do things without limits? You only have the limits that God has put around you, not what man has done. What if I was to tell you that what people said over you was a lie? When they said that you were not going to be to amount to anything, that you didn't know what you were doing, <laughs> that your skin color was horrible and ugly, that you were not beautiful, that you were not worthy. That's right. Even when we can't feel it, God is still working. What if I were to tell you that God took time to make you in the most wonderful way, that he expects the best out of you, and that he put everything in you to win? How would you perform and how would you act if you knew that? Well, dear ones, it is true. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And I want you to step out there in holy boldness, declaring the word of the Lord, using your gifts. Listen, I know it seemed bleak, but you better sharpen those gifts because we about to rise to the top. Somebody say, we about to go up. We about to go up and we about to blow up. Okay. <laughs> Somebody put that in the chat box. Woo! We about to go up and we about to blow up. You just met Jesus in 2019. Oh my gosh. That is so beautiful. I'm so happy for you. I am so happy. Somebody put that in the chat box. We about to go up and we about to blow up. 
And I need for all of y'all to be ready. All of y'all who said y'all gonna write them books and you didn't write them yet, I need you to contact me so we can get them books published, okay? All of you who said you, you the Lord want you to teach and all it, I need for you to sharpen your tools and I need you to get ready. Somebody put get ready in the chat box. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because we about to go up and we about to blow up. Oh, it's a new day. Because Satan wouldn't be fighting you so hard right now. <laughs> if it's not about to break. And it's about to break. Matter of fact, I think I heard something break a couple of days ago. It's about to break. Somebody say it's about to break. Oh, my gosh. It's about to break, y'all. And I thank God so much for all that he is doing because he loves us and he cares about us. But listen, I got to go. Yes, sis. She said it's about to, we about to go up and it's about to blow up. Yes, it's about to break into overflow. And listen, if you're not ready, that's right, Tracy, get ready. Because guess what? If you're not ready, we can go into overflow. And if you don't have your pots and your containers ready, you won't get anything. Remember when the prophet came to the widow and she he said to her, make me something to eat. And she said, well, I'm going to make this cake for me and my son and we were going to die. He said, no, feed me and we'll talk about it. He fed her and then he said, what do you want? What do you have in the house? She said, I just have this little bottle of oil. He said, collect all the containers in the house. And when she collected containers in the house and asked neighbors for containers and went down the street and asked for containers, she began to pour oil into every container. And after the last container, then the oil stopped. She had the overflow where she had enough containers to, con to connect, to contain that overflow. So I need for y'all to get y'all containers ready. Whether it's a container of education, whether it's a container of businesses, whether it's a container of, of, of streams of income, if it's a container of, of, of moving into another place, whatever it is, what education, if you say you was going to get into this spot in your career, get into the spot, get into the place, because overflow is coming. In the name of Jesus. Is anybody going to receive that? Anybody? Oh, my gosh. It's about to go into overflow. Yes, indeed. Well, I got to go. But you can visit me on the web, guys, at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere. It's Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes, um, until Jesus comes back. That's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care, guys. Love you. Hello there, this is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur known as Wise Courtship all over social media. What? You're not subscribed to the Wise Courtship philosophy? Oh my goodness, you've got to listen to this podcast so that you can get your free lifetime subscription as we help you get committed relationships, whole relationships that you're going to be satisfied with. No playing and no games. Find out what they're really about by tuning in.